Hello everyone, welcome to our Friday night session of Cyberpunk Red. I am Simon at Wondering DM, and I'm back in the GMing seat after something strange happened last week and someone hijacked the waves and uh, broadcasted a strange therapeutic episode instead of whatever it is I normally run the group through. Um, that said, a suggestion was given to me after the uh, the net issues I ran into last week. And I do have to agree that um, it was effectively a uh, great therapy session for everyone. And so uh, even for those who couldn't make it, uh, everyone can roll 2d6 and regain that much humanity. Thank God, because I need it. Wait, I'm even, like four. even me? Even you. Oh, that's new. Feels good to talk about it. Yeah. I'm game. So, yep, just roll your 2d6 and, um... That's how much humanity you regain. Um, before we plunge into our tale tonight, I just want to thank our sponsors very quickly, beginning with our Talsorian Games, makers of Cyberpunk Red and The Witcher. They have just released a free DLC for Cyberpunk Red today. Or was it maybe yesterday? I think it was, yeah, today. Uh, so if you want to check it out, they have pre-generated character sheets. They have, I believe, empty templates for scream sheets. Uh, a bunch of goodies for you to enhance your cyberpunk game. Um, otherwise, there's also uh, Found Familiar, great coffee company. You should check them out at foundfamiliar.com. And you can use code WONDERINGDM to get 10% off. Then, uh, of course, who would we be without... Roll20, the platform that we use to play all of our games on here at Wandering DM. You can check them out at roll20.net. And finally, Magen Press, uh, the makers of 5th edition uh, sci-fi fantasy supplement Dark Matter. Uh, we've played Dark Matter here for over a year, and um, there's a lot of good stuff coming soon for Dark Matter, so you should keep an eye out for that. And finally, thank you to our partners, Level Up Dice. You can check them out at levelupdice.net. Without further ado, let's go around the table. Tell us who's your character. Then we'll recap what happened two weeks ago. I think we ended up on a very... Uh, surprising moment. Um... But yes, so let's let's go around our overlay. We'll start with the person to my left. We'll go down the first column and then do the second one. So we'll start with our engineer and techie. Oh, that's me. Hey, y'all. You know me. I'm at Jujuran on Twitter, Praxigo and Thesme Foy. You see me around on Twitch. And I get to be your friendly neighborhood trends. And yes, I can make it go to 11. And sometimes I do come out to help my friends find things out. And then we find weird heads in boxes and that was just a little strange but yeah we'll find out more about that i guess i don't know who keeps sending people heads in the mail that seems like unsanitary and shit um our next player is our group's newly arrived fixer I'm Hannah, Hanimation Art on Twitter, Hanimation Studios on Instagram and Facebook, and Hanimation here on Twitch. And I play Black Cat, the fixer who seems to be able to fix things for everyone else but herself. And that brings us to the rocker boy of the group. How's it going, everyone? My name's Nino. I use he, him pronouns, as does my character, Jimenez. Um, yeah, that's it. Moving on to the other column, uh, we will start with the uh, medic and doctor of the group. Uh, 
muted on Zoom, Chris. I could not find my mute button. The window decided to hide. Oh. I apologize for that. My name is Chris Geary. I'm playing uh, Mr. White, a.k.a. Dr. Frost, the trauma team surgeon and a uh, uh, guy who knows a guy. Uh, and uh, up next, we have the group's guns. I, I don't know if it's me or her, so we, we both have guns. I'm just going to assume it's me. I, I it's don't have you. the screen pulled up. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'm the I'm the gun girl. Uh, this I'm Adelaide. Oh, Adelaide on Twitter and everywhere else. I play Reno, our solo, the one with all the guns, and a little bit of muscle too. And uh, lastly, the group's wheels. Hey, I'm Ren. I play Jinx, crazy ass Jinx, who has a head in her freezer right now because <laughs> she had nowhere else to put it. Yeah. And yeah, speaking of heads and freezers, uh, what do you remember happening uh, last time we played? There was the head, of course. That's what we ended up with. That's probably what we'll start up with. I seem to recall uh, someone wanted very, very much to meet with Imenez. What was the deal exactly? Do y'all remember? Something about a groupie, I don't know, from back east. Eh, something like that. Yeah, but wasn't there that guy who wanted to interview him or something? Yeah, someone up and coming in political circles who seemed to yeah. be interviewing a bunch of uh, persons of interest without actually taking any notes or anything. And uh, we convinced him to pay a, a pretty sum and that we could also bring people along just in case because it sounded really shady. And uh, Mr. White wasn't wrong. There was also the repeated attempts by someone from Eminence's past to reach to, to reach out to him. Um, but as I was reminded twice during the stream, uh, X just blocked her number. So oh, I, I was referring to both of them as groupies, but you know, oh. whatever. I mean, the the politician did come on strong about how much he liked X's performances and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, he he's into edge runners apparently, and uh, the last thing I don't know that what was happened, but I do have furry gang written down on my notes. Then. Oh yeah, those are the stupid cats. One of whom calls himself Heathcliff, but he ain't living on a moor somewhere in England. He's like a pretentious asshole. He pretend to be like a big fat orange fat cat, but he's a dick, and somebody's gonna shoot him in one at some point. Yes, because um, if I remember correctly, Jinx and um, was it? It was Jinx. No, Trince and Jinx, right? That went to um, to the yeah. cool cats. Yeah, we, we dealt some with some criminal things, and we found some information. It was useful, mostly, except for the guy who was an asshole. And, um, that's where we're going to pick back up, actually, a few minutes after we ended our last episode, with me, anyway, um, in the apartment, um, with Jinx and Trince by the door, holding this shipping box with the disembodied head of one Zolos Shade in it with a note saying you're next what do you do? okay so I didn't put it in my freezer yet no yeah that's creepy. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> is uh, the doc around? Do we know if he's around? Trends is sending him messages for, through the... Okay. Through the eye going, that's creepy shit. Why the fuck would somebody put like that eye 
nails through the eyes bullshit. Like, is the head like actually a thing? Like, she just has a running commentary in the group chat at this point. I'll 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 mute that and then come back to it later when I think she's done, so I can read it all at once. <laughs> it's like this is Trin's level of panic. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna. Jinx folds up the box and, like, hold on. And, like, she goes, she actually does put it in her freezer. And, like, there. It's out of view, out of. And I'll go with the trends and be like, it's okay. It, it's it's okay. Don't, don't worry. Just forget about it. Please. You're gonna yeah. be okay, right? <laughs> I'm gonna be fine. It's just real. Rude! Somebody sent you a head. They sent you the head of your uncle through the mail. Like that's really mean. Like what is like the, the delivery guy had to carry a head through the mail. I'm that's just, pretty like, sure the delivery guy didn't even know. But it's unsanitary. And oh it my god, I'm gonna have to disinfect delivery. the mail. I'm gonna have to disinfect the entire building. Oh shh! I'm gonna disinfect the entire building. Why? You don't know where he went. The blood could be seeping <laughs> everywhere. You don't want that shit. I don't mean <laughs> any of this. Nope. Nope. Uh. Uh. I'm going and dis- and going to disinfect everything later. Like, there, there's there's no blood on. There's nothing. I don't care. I could get molecules. You might not be able to see with your naked eye, but like the uh, the UV ray, the thing, the the black light thing, that could totally see it. I. You don't want to see what else I had to disinfect in this building after we took possession of it. You do not want to know what people got up to in that elevator. I'm just telling you, you don't want to ever know. I know way too much shit about that that's, fucking elevator. That's why That's why White takes the stairs most times. <laughs> I mean, I used to play target practice with the Andersons, so yeah. there's a lot more blood around here than you think. Oh, you meant literal target practice. For a second yeah. there, I thought it was a euphemism. Nope. Well, Jinx had fun playing target practice. Okay. She, you know, when she couldn't sleep. Anyway. Um, I'm fine. Okay. As, as long as you're fine. Benedict, make a note. We need to add hydrochloric acid and industrial Clorox to the shipping orders. And Reno is paying out of the apartment building's budget. Has Reno approved of this? She will when I tell her what it's for. Adding them to the cart. Fine. Um. <laughs> Reno, I'm adding industrial cleaner to the cart <laughs> to sanitize after the dead head showed up on the doorstep. You know, I don't think Reno would think that that was like the first thing that J- not Jinx, uh, uh, Trins wanted to actually clean. She just assumes that, like, something, something fucked up in Trins' apartment, and it's just not good. It's it's not even about the head. The head, she could care less about. That's fine. Something happened in that apartment. <laughs> she doesn't prove it, though. Um, that was mostly all the events that happened in the early hours of the day. We'll move our clock forward um, while Mr. White is still at work. Um, Eminez and Black Cat, you have this appointment in the afternoon, if I remember correctly, atop Club Atlantis, Private Garden. Anybody else coming along? Yeah, I think I sent a group chat that asked people to come. Um, For the purposes of this, if White wants to tag along, he could, you know, request an early, um, like, end his shift early. He's not going to unless something's dire. Or unless somebody, unless somehow they actually contact him at work, which is an emergency only kind of circumstance. Which means he'll show up like it's an emergency, so... It's fine to go without me. Alright. 
So who else in the gang will hop into the uh, RV to go? I'll be there right. I'll go. I'll go. I mean, is it super public? <laughs> the... You could be inside the RV and nobody would know. Pretty sure it's just our people and his people. Yeah, Club Atlantis is this very high-end nightclub um, that is in a um, in a skyscraper, and one level of like the club occupies like the f last four levels of the building, and on one of them there's an exit that leads to a, a an immense balcony that's been rearranged into like this sort of Zen garden type of thing. And that's where he gave you. Um, so it's a public area. The club, however, would be closed during that meeting because we're in the middle of the day. Who, who are we meeting again? Politician. Politician. Oh, the, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The Watson Dev guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, what the heck. I'll go. So the groups hops into the RV and uh, make their way to Club Atlantis. I have a question for all of you while you're in transit. What are you wearing and what are you bringing? Trins is wearing the fancy outfit that she bought in Vegas. You're going to a club, she's going clubbing. And she did her hair. Ooh. I think Kat will switch out her usual, like, flashy coat for something a little more muted and dark. I'll wear my nicer set of clothes that she got at in LA. Yeah. Yeah, Reno's got a nicer set of slightly lit up streetwear uh but she definitely has like armor jack underneath it you know and she brings she doesn't bring the assault rifle but she is she is licensed to kill kind of thing you know oh yeah jinx has her guns Especially you know what she'll sniper. even wash her hair that that's what she'll do she'll wash her hair she doesn't usually wash her hair so <laughs> it's a special occasion fancy tonight, y'all. It's that much of a special occasion. Um, and what about you, X? X will wear, um, you will actually dress up in a um, corpo-style suit with no tie. Very okay, so we all need to. We, we all need to know this for the visual and the art that will possibly eventually erupt from this. Is this an open collar or a closed collar without tie? Uh, we'll say it's open collar. And uh, you can see uh, he's actually wearing jewelry. He's got a uh, black surfer's pearl on. Classy. And aside from Reno and Jinx, are any of the other three packing anything? Save the cyberware that we all know you have anyway, but like in addition to that, do you bring anything? I trust them. <laughs> all right. Then you make your way to the nightclub. As you approach uh, this area of Night City, you realize that the armored RV contrasts with everybody else on the streets. Um, it shows that you are not from this part of town. Um, the Atlantis is in... I just need to get the page that I had earlier. Um... Please, thank you. 
the key places. Um, Club Atlantis is in one of the um, like untouched district of town. Ah, oh, there we go. It's number five on the map. So you're almost in the old uh, corporate center. And um, it miraculously suffered almost no damage following the bomb 20 years ago. The style of the building itself is very much what we would call retro in 2045 and something that we in 2020 would call futuristic think about the same look as like the Burj Khalifa in um wow I forgot the name of that city Dubai in Dubai yeah so like steel concrete covered in glass that shows a, a very sleek modern building um, without it being too imposing. It is elegant, yet also very fucking phallic. Um, there is in uh, teal lettering flashing above the uh, entrance door to this tower, the uh, logo of Club Afterlife. And of course, right next to each door, you have... Um, plaques that have been screwed into the building with like a registry of all of the other um, like smaller corporations that hold offices here during the day the um, a lot of the like corpo stooges walk to the door or exit most of them exit actually the building given this time of day um, but you notice that those that do leave are very well dressed we're talking probably leadership material those who can afford to not work 50 hours a week. Uh, uh, huh? What? I'm sorry, people do that? Don't work 50 hour weeks? Uh, if, if you are high enough on the corporate ladder, I assume that 40 hours is, is what you do. Unfortunately... Even I, as a freelancer, am not high on the corporate ladder. You make your way inside, leaving the sounds of the city behind. There are multiple elevators that lead to different floors, but the, uh, the one for, specifically for Club Afterlife, is branded club afterlife uh, and you notice that the doors are currently open but that there's no one in the elevator itself do you all cram into the elevator unfortunately a little claustrophobic but yes yep okay so having experience in living in the city of new york with a number of rooftops and bars and rooftops in New York. Is there a gentleman slightly to one of the sides? Gentleman or holding onto the door? No, security with little tick barks who can just check that you're actually, you know, the people who prevent you oh. from going anywhere else in the building, but only up to the club. Yeah, there's a um, there's a a man behind a reception area counter that. Um, did I say afterlife? I said Atlantis. Club Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Yes. I might have said afterlife by mistake, but no, it's the Club Atlantis. Uh, there is a person behind a reception area that is just looking at you as you go in, um, but doesn't say anything, doesn't mention you not being allowed to go anywhere. He's mostly, you get the feeling, that he's mostly waiting for you to you know direct yourselves to one of the elevators and then he'll probably react turns his smiles and walks into the elevator up to the club and she's got this um she's wearing that modified cheng song that uh 
she bought in Vegas that, you know, very high end, very well fit, very name brand. Um, you all cram up in the elevator and press the button to go to Club Atlantis. The elevator brings you up to a uh, soft, uh, chill music. When the door opens into Club Afterlife, there is only a single person there. Um, Rick Moranis looking man with a clearly uh, wearing a bulletproof vest with uh, a, a tag that's been like velcroed over it. It says security. And he's sitting at one of the tables. He has laid out on the table a, uh, a, a pump shotgun and a glass of what you suppose is alcohol, but you can't really make out what's in it at the moment. And he pushes his glasses up when you come in and says, You with Ryan? That's the name of the guy we're here to see? Yeah, Lucius Ryan. Okay. Yep. We here. Take the stairs over in the back. Next floor up. You exit by the doors. Cheers. As you make your way there, uh, someone uh, you sort of like awkwardly meet someone leaving in the stairs. Um, a young man, probably early thirties, um, dressed in in sort of a mismatched outfit that makes an attempt at looking nice, but clearly is made of. Um, various like pieces of clothing that he found like at the thrift store store or maybe in a container um the thing that does stand out though is his face is impeccably kept like a well-groomed beard the lines of his cyber wear are very thin almost none apparent uh it seems like he's uh uh injected a lot of money in like this area and nothing else below. And he just says, oh, oh, pardon me. Excuse me. But, oh, oh, coming through. And he comes down the stairs and leaves um, through the elevator. Somebody in it you know. Did we? This is not someone any one of you would know in game, but because this is all taking place in the same giant city and everything, this was a lucky catch from the Wednesday show. But he had a scene like that, blah, blah, blah. There's a scene like this here so that it crosses. But yeah, you're basically meeting Ryan a few minutes after he did. As you exit the bar into the uh, garden, who's the first person to step out? Because this person will be mom armed. I assume it's me. <laughs> the moment you step outside, a rather big arm just put like appears in front of you. Oh uh, yeah, the you, touch. You turn to see a like six foot six woman in a, a three-piece suit. She Ooh. has a well-defined jawline and short... Step on me. Step cropped... on me. Let's go. Uh, I was about to say, <laughs> yeah, you can touch, actually. I take that back. <laughs> um, you notice on her knuckles, she has big golden uh, caps on them. Very similar to what Reno has on her fists as well. And she turns to you and says, You packing? Not I. 
But some of our party are. Is this a problem? She removes her arm and says, you can go. And then she'll okay. stop the next person. You pack in? Always. I don't go anywhere without it. Is that going to be a problem? You leave them with me. I'll take good care of them. Is she going to pat... Did she pat Cat down? No, she didn't pat Cat down. Because Cat said that she didn't have anything. I am going to give her my cheaper pistol. But I'm going to keep the big one. The very heavy pistol? Oh, that one's not concealable, is it? Yeah, the the very big one okay, cannot yeah, yeah, be concealed. Yeah, the very big one. Okay, I'll give you the very big one. I'm keeping the cheaper one on me, though. Okay. Um, can you make a conceal object check? Yes, I can. And that'll be opposed nice. with hers. Nice roll. D10. DV we're looking for is a 12. I hit a 12. All right, meet and beat. So uh, she looks you up and down and then stares at your hands and says, that's a good model. Try not to use them. Thanks. She removes her arm to go. And she does that with the next person too. You pack in. So basically, if anyone wants to carry a weapon, it's going to have to be concealed. She doesn't appear to be searching for anyone, patting anyone down. Um, it's more of a sort of... It's almost formal more than anything, like not really for security, but more so that, you know, you don't show up to talk to Mr. Ryan while being clearly armed. I know Imanez cannot be, uh, be uh, departed of his weapons. He's a pacifist. Flashback to when you threw a guy through a table. Um, she lets, like, the moment she sees you, like, she re she instantly recognizes X. And says, oh, the man of the hour. Kimi. I've seen you fight. You can pass. Oh, well, thank you. And Jinx and Trins, are you trying to bring in any weapons? No. Trins just follows from Anas. And just kind of waves. She just nods. Let's go. And Jinx? Jinx will give her the case with her sniper. <laughs> I like uh, that you just carry your sniper rifle with you everywhere. Oh yeah, well it's in a it's in a case that doesn't look like a gun case. Like it's it looks like pool co pool cues or whatever. It's a big case like that. <laughs> she takes the case, she puts it down, she puts Reno's weapon on top of it. And she stands at attention. Um, and you notice against a very startling backdrop, the end of the garden is back turned to you, Mr. Lucius Ryan. A corpulent yet broad shouldered black man, very short hair, um, almost a buzz cut even, uh, wearing a light gray jacket and pants. He doesn't seem to have, anyway, from the back of his head, 
uh, any implants whatsoever. He's looking out from the balcony into the... Uh, so the balcony gives on to the north of the city. So basically, he has front row view to the destruction of the old city center. It's very strange to walk in this garden with, you know, the, the meticulously um, uh, trimmed bonsai trees, the sand gardens, the benches, there's even a little fountain. It's quiet, it's peaceful. And then the moment you look up, you see like a, a giant rusted beam of steel just fall off from one of the ruins and break apart as it reaches the ground, like 20 floors below. Um, you can hear the distant sound of a handful of construction teams, mostly mechs and graphs, pulling stuff from the wreckage. It's been 20 years and they still find like some of the missing and the dead in the uh, in the rubble. You are close enough that it you if you have a Geiger counter, it does go off. But there's no it's not lethal. Okay, since Trends does have a Geiger counter, the question is, is this Okay, so it's not immediately lethal, but is it enough that we should be concerned about the timeline of our exposure? Nah. No, no, no. It's within acceptable levels. Um, okay. I mean, if you were to come here every day, you might end up with, like, he like constant headaches or something. But otherwise, it's not... Uh... The... the um, um, what's it called again? Not the FDA, but the um, CDC approved the, uh, the, the 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 club and you know how far away it is from the city center and the uh, the area of radioactivity. So it's according to the government anyway. It's not going to kill you, and you won't have any side effects. Mister Ryan turns around. Uh, when you're done with his bodyguard, I guess. It says, Ah. I see you've brought your entourage. Uh, yes. As agreed. And as Do agreed, I... Do see anybody I... else nope. that he has brought? Hmm. He is by himself. Well, except for his bodyguard next to the elevator. Uh, he strides forward and extends a hand toward Imanes. Lucius will shake. Carlton Batista. Yeah, um, it's always good to get them out of the building every once in a while to make sure that they're still socialized. <laughs> well, I, for one, am always amazed to see how different edge runners are from the rest of the city do you bear your individuality on your sleeve that is more than can be said of a lot of people down there marks you as important people but never mind me gushing about you there was a reason why I asked you to be here. He motions to a bench. Shall we talk shop for a moment? Sure. Um, he sits down and uh, like rests his elbows on his knees and steeples his fingers and begins to talk about you know his career in Night City, how he grew up in South Night City. Um, he was originally from Haywood, uh, but his parents, uh, their home was seized and, uh, they had to make do with what they had in, uh, a more 
a safer area of the combat zone. And he always grew up wanting to help his neighbor. He is, in his words, as much Night City as Night City is me. And I would hate for Night City to go down crumbling like this. And he points to the destruction to the north. You're probably familiar with my work with the Watson development, yes? I've heard some things about it. I had to fight tooth and nail to be able to get this project approved and started. You see, Night City has had an... I will not mince word, a cancer. Ever since its, its, its inception. This city and its people were all prey to the big corporations that in actuality rule Night City. The only reason the fourth corporate war didn't extend anywhere else within Night City when it happened is due to the soul might of the entirety of the military force of our country. If Arasaka had been prepared, this would have been drawn out into what could have possibly become the, the Third World War. I do not want this to happen again to my city. I do not want entire boroughs and districts answer only to the whims of a mega corporation. I believe it is time for change, for meaningful change. And I believe that this change will not start from those that are hidden in their ivory towers. If I mean to save this city, I'm going to need all the help I can get. And I'm going to need help from people that do not answer to anyone. People who aren't afraid, and he like locks eyes with uh, with Imanez. People who aren't afraid to stand up to the corporations, regardless of their threats. Who are able to proudly show their middle fingers, and yell out to the giants of this world, shove it up your ass. These are the type of people I'm looking for. So you're trying to start a grassroots political movement with edge runners. Is that what I'm gathering here? You and I think alike, Mr. Batista. So what say you? I have some pull in the on the political scene of Night City. With a bit of elbow grease, I could make sure that the appropriate eyes are directed at your next few matches. I understand that Night City Wrestling has sort of suspended you following the events that occurred with Miss Applegate. Partially, although that's more of a storyline than it is an actual suspension. Yes, but I don't recall storylines in wrestling going so far as to physically assault another wrestler repeatedly. You just haven't been watching the uh, right kind of wrestling, I suppose. From what I recall, she drew blood. Well, 
a lot of us bleed during matches. But, uh, I will admit those punches did well, some injury. Well, I'm glad to see that you are up on your feet and about. What would you expect us to do for you, Percy? Expect you to do nothing else than what you've already been doing. It's just that I would like to make sure that whatever you do, you keep me appraised of it. I have contacts in the media I can easily help you help the city. I may come across from time to time in certain things that would require investigation. I assure you nothing that would be immoral or unethical. Well, where's the fun of that? I never said that it wouldn't be illegal. But we all know who the law benefits here in this country. But if we're going to do this whole um, back scratching thing, um, there is something that I'm working on right now and Maybe you would like to uh, provide some resources or assistance. Hmm. I'm all ears. So, I don't know if you keep up with Nomad News, but there's a certain group that calls themselves the Racket Chiv that have been um, combing the city. Um, for a very specific target. I don't really care for outsiders coming in to Night City. No, we should Farming always... People. Sorry, what? <clears throat> and, and harming people who are just minding their own business. So... Um, but they tend to be kind of elusive. So, maybe would help us a great deal if we could get some surveillance information on where they may be moving around in the city that we can uh, address the problem directly. I can ask around. I have an extensive network of eyes on the streets. Any distinctive signs that we should be looking for? Nomads normally carry their flag or their imagery with them. Cat, do you have a picture of their flag on your phone or agent by any chance? Cat. Do I? Yeah. Okay. Well, then yes, I do. Um, Show it. He takes your agent and looks at it. Okay. You notice while he was looking at your agent, uh, his left eye shone like a light blue for a moment. Do I know what that means? Uh, he probably, there's 
probably an implant in his eye that did something. Okay. The likeliest explanation would be he probably took a picture. Copied, yeah. Okay. It's fine. I will put my people on that. Cleaning up the streets would go a long way into making Night City a little safer. There are many, many things that need to be taken care of. The one thing I am missing, and by all means this is not a request for aid, but if you do happen to know of someone with a with similar values as the ones we share who also happen to be um how do the youth put it again um flush with scratch you can send them my way always looking for donors to help the campaign Oh, you want us to do some fundraising for you too? No, that's exactly what I do not want you to do. But if you happen to <clears throat> come across a lost wallet, you know, in your line of work, just know that I don't ask questions. I think I get what you're saying. It is unfortunate that we must dirty our hands to save this place, but you cannot build anything with clean hands. We'll wait for your information, but uh... I will have my people on this today, and hopefully, we'll be able to give you an answer. Oh, maybe before tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully, that uh, once you do give us that information, uh, we can demonstrate. Uh... Our um, skills at problem solving for you. Great. By the way, he looks to the rest of the group. I didn't get your names. Did you need them? Simple politeness. Okay, you can give me your street names. Oh, hey, I'm Trins. Nice to meet you. Hello, Trins. He shakes your hand. He turns back to, to X after no one speaks up, and he's like, Wow, I see what you meant by making them socialize. They are very shy. It is, but... Uh... It took a while to get them to stop biting. Hmm. He takes another look at everyone. He gets up and says, Well, that concludes our meeting, I believe, unless you have questions for me. I have one question. Uh, X's compensation for coming here. Now the DM needs to be reminded. I think he paid half up front, right? Did he? I don't think he paid me anything up front. So he owes me 700 and 50. Oh. Nothing was paid. Thank you. I was just unsure of that. Um, do you have a uh, 
mean of like a bank account number? Like PayPal address? Something? Venmo. <laughs> What's your Kofi? Cash app! <laughs> I only pay in Bitcoin. Um, yeah, no, he's gonna transfer you 750. Okay. And it is marked, uh, the transfer is marked for a, um, a consultation fees. Great. In case, you know, y'all criminals do your taxes. We're legitimate, thank you. Yeah. Well, have a good day. Likewise. And he um, goes back to sit on the bench and gets out his agent as you walk out of the garden. The tall woman waits for you by the elevator. She has the uh, case with the sniper rifle in one hand, the pistol in the other. She hands them back. And as she does, she says, he is a great man. Thanks. You've been working with him for a while now? Nigh on three years. Long time to be employed for someone. He is one of the rare flowers that grow up in this jungle of concrete. Uh, very poetic of you. And uh, you are... get my notes Talia well it was a pleasure to meet you Talia likewise she gives you your you know hands out your the moment she hands out your weapons however she will like place herself between the garden and the elevator Sort of like to block the way um, between uh, you and the mayor. Well, not the mayor, but Mr. Ryan. Sure. You certainly affected your job. Are there people who have tried to hurt him before? Countless times, yeah. People do not like, let me rephrase that, Night City does not take well to people with ideals. Any chance do you any, do any side work when you're not uh, doing the bodyguard thing for uh, Mr. Ryan? This is a 24-7 job. No free time then? None at all. Not even to get a drink or something? Poker game? Is this how people flirt in Night City? I that mean, it's how flirt. I do. I don't know about other people, but... Uh... Yeah. You could just say no, that's fine. She looks you up and down and says, maybe on my day off. And when is that? Shrugs. <laughs> okay, it's not the worst I've been turned down. That's fine, we can go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you leave. Um, the, uh, the club. Do you want to head out somewhere special? Or, um, are you just going b straight back to, um, to the apartment? Because if you do, then we're just gonna, 
mosey on over and uh, fast forward until Mr. White finishes working. I suppose that wasn't a bad uh, bad fee for uh, about 20 minutes worth of work. No, and I got a bunch of little matchboxes from the door. Oh, well. Can't have enough matches, I guess. Nope. He's it, it, all while he's talking and doing this, he's going to be going through his agent and he's going to actually uh, transfer um, a portion of his uh, funds over to Black Cat to cover her fee. Normally gets a 10% cut, but uh, he will actually double it this time to uh, 150. Yeah, since it was the first deal that she's brokered. Next. Honestly, I thought you would have gotten Talia's number there too. You know, you win some, you lose some. It's all good. <laughs> Next time. If you're on um, Legend Keeper, you should see Talia. Under inhabitants? Uh, inhabitants of knights. Oh, wait, she might still be. Ah, there we go. Uh, let me just put it in uh, alphabetical order. That's my bad. There we go. She should be under T's. E. Why, man, that's just rubbing salt in the wound. Why, what? I couldn't get her number. <laughs> it's not that you didn't get her number. This is, you'll probably oh, during your boy. <laughs> let's just go back. Let's go back to the club. It's fine. Let's just go back. No, let's keep Detour. going. Let's keep going. <laughs> I mean, I know she's not nine foot tall, but. <laughs> She can break people. With so. one fucking leg alone, Jesus. <laughs> you head back to the apartment, 700 bucks the richer, and uh, you have a... Uh, you, you'll arrive almost at the same time as... Um, as Mr. White finishing his shift. Uh, basically, the cab that brings White home would be like about a block behind yours. You're fairly certain white during your, your ride home that you saw the the RV like cross a, a perpendicular street at some point. Fair enough. Um, in the cab ride home, he'd start scrolling through the slew of messages that um, Trins had sent earlier in the day while he was working. Yeah. There's a head in a box, and things need to be um, sterilized, cleaned, uh, disinfected. There's probably blood everywhere. The poor delivery guy. All right. I have questions, but I'll have to wait till I get there. You get there. The group is in the garage chatting about, uh, about stuff. Y'all see Mr. Talia. Yeah, yeah, the group is probably still talking about Talia. Trins has probably changed by this point, so she's back in her, you know, coveralls and other stuff. Uh, she's got a bunch of work she wants to finish, so. Mostly sanitizing the entire building and contemplating ways in which to add 
industrial cleaner to the sprinkler system. What? Okay. No. So, no. so X is no. going to be there helping her. He's got, you know, the rubber gloves on and he's scrubbing and he's patiently trying to explain. Okay, I, I appreciate that you are thinking about ways to efficiently distribute industrial cleaner. It's just that I feel the inhabitants and their and their personal possessions um, might not be happy with that. I can limit it to the hallways. Decon showers, full decon system. You know, I would have never really pictured you for a germaphobe. Dead head in a box, spiky things out the eye. I mean, we've seen worse. All over my building. Yeah, I think did he is. actually tell you that he took this head and walked the halls of your building like one by one? There was a box at the door, which meant the delivery guy came to the door. I don't know which halls he went through. Also, decontamination is never a bad thing. We do live in a irradiated shithole of a city. Right, but I don't think that your postman took the box and walked it down every single hallway in your entire building. That seems excessive. I'm thinking about worst case scenarios. Also, you know, personal defense options. But like, the, the, there was no blood leaking out of the box. I mean, I checked. But anyway. So I think that's when when White would cross path with uh with the group. <laughs> um, as he comes, you know, into like. Like the group, he'll kind of walk up and just look over at Trend and say, "Whatever you're thinking, the answer is no." Um, you contamination showers. No, the answer is no. Uh, Jinx, yeah. bring your head to my apartment. I gotta change and take okay. a non-chemically lethal shower. I'm not talking chemically lethal. You. I saw something about ordering industrial cleaners. Yes, in the standard. messages. Yeah, that is chemically lethal to people who are not, well, actually to people. You're not supposed to ingest it. You shower them with it, they get in all their offices. I don't want to use that on the showers. You are going to use it all over the apartment. No. It, it aerosols when you spray it like that. And then it, it mystifies. And next thing you know, people are breathing it in. It's going in through their mucous membranes in the nose, mouth, eyes, other places. No better than to mix Clorox and... and, and uh, well, then you'd and, blow uh, things up. Industrial cleaners are bad for your health. Fine. I'm adding vinegar and baking soda to everything I see. You think that's going to not blow shit up? I can blow up a whole lot more shit with just vinegar and baking soda. I didn't say anything about blowing stuff up. We're not going to do that either. What I'm saying is you're not going to poison people with industrial cleaners in the sprinkler system. But we're on people. I would say like we are closing down the facility for the next 10, five minutes while we clean the building. Don't leave your apartment. I'm going to stay with my initial statement. No, whatever it is you're thinking, no. And he just walks, walks on. That's just ridiculous. Inks goes get the head in the box in the freezer. It it's still there. I mean, didn't move. You um bring it to uh bring it to White and um well White you have a head in front of you. Oh. Uh. First of all, is it human? Well, it, it is human looking. It's a human head. Okay. Uh, put on gloves, take it out of the box, stick it on the stainless steel table. Plop. Does it's it got... actually look like flesh and bone? Or does it look like a facsimile? So, with your trained doctor eyes, um, 
My special eyes. Your special eyes. <laughs> um, so here's the thing about skin in Night City in 2045, is that a lot of people, due to the cyberware that they have, will often cover the implants with synth skin, mm -hmm. which is almost impossible to distinguish from real skin. But you're a trained doctor, you take the time you need to, you know, move the head, rotate it, flip it, um, look anywhere for any sign that this is real skin or not. It is also where it was skin. severed off at the neck. Yeah. You're going to be able to see all of the edges. It is synth skin. That That's definitely the case. But it is synth skin all over the skull. Which is not something that anyone would have done. Well, not unless you're trying to fake something. Well, yeah. Um, so if, or if you it, have a completely fake face, maybe. But that would be your face, not necessarily like the back of your head, the oh, top yeah, of yeah. your skull. The, and it's also, uh, and that's what um, uh, White finds out, is normally someone would have that if they put in an armored plate under their, their skin, on their face. Mm -hmm. But that normally makes the face look a little jagged. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the case in this instance. And Shade, from what you remember of what little you saw of him originally, mm -hmm. didn't seem to have any of these implants. You take about an hour uh, and um, really meticulously look, you know, even inside the head. It is a fake. I like, I was going to say, once I know that it's synth skin everywhere, I'll just look over at Jinx and be like, do you care if I dissect it? No. And then I'll pull out a scalpel and I'll literally just cut the cut the skin right down the center on both sides and so I can get to the skull. Pop it open. Yeah. Pop it open. So the skull is a real skull. Mm-hmm. Everything... Now, based on the cheekbones and jawline and everything, does it line up with the actual face? More or less, in the sense that you see, like, especially around the jawbone, they mm -hmm. put in some filling. Oh, so. To have the it, same. It was altered to look. Yeah. Or to be the right. So the gotcha. skull belonged to someone who lived at some point. Mm -hmm. But the rest is just a prop. A very, very well made prop. Like, not the type of thing that just about anyone could make. Okay. Do I know anyone that has that level or that does that sort of thing? Like just in the medical world, is anybody, so, some people might be taxidermists, some people might do, you know, elaborate uh, props for horror films or whatever the case may be, just because they can for extra cash on the side. Um, do I know anyone that's known for that or that was their retirement gig? Um not really okay like you know of like some doctors who had like a passing interest in uh taxidermy or even like helping out like as a consultant on on movie shoots but no one that you knew that could do this level of oh. realism they'd have to be one hell of a plastic surgeon to begin with yeah then they'd have to have some sort of macabre interest in the horrific you're looking you're looking at someone who probably makes it their career to do gotcha. just that so, unfortunately um, there are no like makers mark or brands or logos okay. anywhere on there but what about in the what about the spikes that I would have to pull out so the like rebar spikes yeah um are just that like someone pulled some like pieces of rebar from a construction site okay and just, so it's just random them. scrap because uh, usually, like, there are a variety of messages, and I know there was a note, but sometimes there's other, other metaphors involved. Um, so I was just kind of looking to see anything out of place. Um, um, you can make a... Uh, let me grab... A grill jinx about what kinds of implants she knows that, he, that her uncle had, and I'd look for flaps in those areas that might be hiding some other message. Um, 
Jinx would know that uh, your uncle, if there's one thing he cared about, is the integrity of his face. There's no no scalpel come near the money maker. Okay. Anything else is fair game, but like no no cyber eyes, no neural wear, no cyber audio. Not that she knows anyway. Things might have changed over the years. Um But This is talking about Lucius? Uh no, uh Solo Shade. Oh Solo Shade, okay. So if you can make a um a conceal reveal object check, Mr. White. Yeah. Conceal reveal object. Mm -hmm. Are there any miscellaneous bonuses that I have for that due to the equipment that I have? Um I have scanners, I have all kinds of stuff. Let me check your sheet very quickly. If uh Jinx wants to help, she can always use a complementary skill to give you a plus one. She would just need to tell me which skill she's using. No, I just want to make sure I'm not missing it like we learned with like the agents that there was... Yeah. Um, um, it, do you have... Okay, so your your sheet... your sheet is. I don't have list. everything listed on there. I'm still... Yeah. No, but it's you have in the, my other document. You have the micro... What does the micro optics did again? It's basically a... Um, uh, a mag uh, uh, microscope, but in my eye, so I can get oh, into the four hundred. Yeah. Yep. So that would give you a plus two. Okay. See, that's the kind of stuff that I wasn't sure about. Yeah. So, okay. So I'll do that. Bang, and bang. And did it come through? I didn't. Yes, know. it's a it's a crit. Okay. Um. Uh, so with a twenty-two, you look at the head and realize that there is something in the right eye. Mm. What's left of it after the rebar was slammed through it? Uh, no, the, the other eye. My bad. Oh, so the rebar was only through one of them? Yes. Oh, okay, I thought the rebar was through both. Okay. No, 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 just one. Uh, the like, intact one. So, like, in the eye, like, back where the lens is, like, I'd have to go through the iris... It's, oh, uh, you take fine. it, you take it and you zoom in mm -hmm. and you see, it looks like an ant. An ant? That, yeah. That's just staring at you. It's like a tiny mechanized ant. Um, we're going to take a break on that. And when we come back, we're going to, uh, probably content warning, uh, dissect an eye. So stick around, everyone. We'll be back in a few minutes.
Hello! Wrong button on my stream deck. We're back. So... Mr. White took the eye in his hands. And, uh... I didn't take the eye out yet. Okay. I thought it was still... It's still in the... It's still attached the to the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so... Um, as soon as he sees the mechanical ant, he will reach down into his pocket, pull out his jammer, and turn on the signal jammer. And uh, Jinx, you might hear him actually say, oh, fuck. What? What? There's something here. I don't know if it's watching. I don't know if it's tracking. At least it's not a bomb. Are we sure it's not a bomb? Because I can take that apart too. It's not a bomb. See? Okay. Well, I mean, if it was tracking hearing, it spent, it spent a lot of time in the freezer. Um, not much to listen to. Is it moving, Simon? Um, no, the moment you start your jammer, it goes inert excellent I will get the appropriate tools and I will be excising a mechanical ant from the inside of this eye can we track the signal it's sending and find out where it's going eventually okay you uh, it's gonna take a about maybe a half hour, but you're gonna be able to excise the eye carefully, open it up, and remove this tiny ant. It's now that you see it from up close, uh, it is completely mechanical. It is a very, very tiny drone. Something <laughs> that uh, on the street is known as a nano drone. They sent you a little friend. Can I play with it? I mean... Sure. What else are we going to do with it? Worst case scenario, she breaks it and stops tracking us. Yeah, yeah that's true. So, my uncle isn't dead. No, this isn't your uncle. Yes! Still get to kill him. Yes, you still get to kill your uncle. Good. You can put his name back on your list. I am going to do that. But anyway. So. <laughs> Look at Trent. What are you doing with it? Well, first I'm going to see uh, if I can't... Uh determine where its signal is coming from and then possibly if we can determine that send it somewhere else like oh I don't know an agent which is much better and then I can wipe the whole system and then I have a new toy to play with okay once you're done analyzing what it does I will turn off the jammer and you can figure out where the signal's going okay This is almost makes up for getting a head in the box, in the floor, um, delivered to the apartment. I like toys. Yeah. As you can tell by the lack of blood, this was never a sanitary issue. Still sanitizing the building. Mm -hmm. We are higher class establishment now. Do it the old-fashioned way. We don't have enough lemons. There's still a lonely and peeling up in the hallways. I don't think it's then high class yet. Hire a janitorial staff <laughs> to clean the halls. Do not retrofit something and create a contraption. I don't want the fire suppressant system to go to 11, thank you. You say that now, but it was very useful a few months ago. Yeah, when it was still water. It is still water. 
well, most of it. There, I did use also chemical suppression in case there was an actual like gas or oil fire, but that's a separate system. Is there fluoride in the water? Of course. Dental health's important. Um, <laughs> oh, next on the list, Jinx, is a uh, shoot right to the incinerator. Okay. What? Or not Jinx, sorry. Trins. I'm upgrading oh. this apartment. Sorry. Oh, you want, oh, in this room, in this apartment, because I was like, there is one, it's right in the hall, but okay, I can add another one into your apartment. I don't want to have to go to the hall with some of this stuff. Oh, yeah, I'll freak fair. out Mrs. B. Yeah, we don't want to freak out Mrs. B. She might withhold cookies. Well, not only that, I don't want her leaving or having for bed something else. Wait, did we introduce Mrs. B to Cat? Cat, did we introduce you to Mrs. B? Did we get you on the cookie list? You have to be on the cookie list. In the hole is an incinerator? Yeah, it's like a garbage disposal. You stick it, you stick the garbage down there. It goes in directly to the incinerator in the basement. It's like a massive savings on the electrical, on the gas bill and the heating bill. I thought it was the laundry chute. No, there's the, the one that's the laundry chute has the big, you know, laundry on it. Well, that explains a lot then. No, but um. Wait, when did we fix the laundry chute? And do we have any washers and dryers? Yes. I've been sending and I put my in stuff out for cleaners for uh, since I've moved in. I sent an inter apartment memo when Jimenez and I put the new washers in. Oh, I should read those sometime. I just thought you were too good to use our washers. No, I just didn't even know that they were there. I get so many memos. I'm just like, another one? Seriously? It goes to my spam folder. I feel hurt that I send things and they go to your spam folder. I should write higher than your spam folder. Well, you usually come to my apartment and tell me everything anyway. This was for everybody. Reno said I had to send it that way. It would be all like official and shit. Don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> and, and don't take offense. It's any into uh, apartment memo that goes to my spam folder, not just yours. So then I know them for future reference. Bandic, make a special note. We will inform the doc in person of any major changes to the living environment. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no. So the, the laundry chute is the one with the big L on the button. And the one that has the big garbage can looking thing, that's the incinerator chute. Now I know. Is that why you've been wearing the same, like, three outfits? You know, oh, yes, but you know what? I like these outfits. I look good in this, so what? I'm not rich enough to recycle things. Come on. You, like, are, don't you, you do wear look, the same clothes. You do look good in that. It looks very attractive See, on you. I look smashing. I, I'm not saying you didn't. I, I was just kind of curious as to. Yeah, well, I guess I'm not getting my other clothes back now. It's good to know. No, you know, you book more jobs and then you'll get a high fee and you can no, no. go out shopping. Sure. Where are these cookies? I was promised cookies. Across the hall with Mrs. B. All right, I will go across the hall and see about those cookies. Jimenez, you should go and introduce her to Mrs. B because I'm going to take this thing apart. And <laughs> she's like half like pulling mini the, the like the ice, um, the eyeglass size magnetic um, screwdrivers from like the braid in her hair. It's lighting up. As she kind of focuses in on the little tiny ant thing.
the, something like this would have a serial number, corp manufacturer, be stamped with identifying markers. Yes, the DM is muted. Thank you, Super Mega Punch. <sighs> All right. Uh, what what's the last thing you heard? <laughs> I'll go back from the beginning. So this is a very tiny, tiny ant. A uh, little camera in the front, little motor, not made to move very fast or much at all, if anything. Uh, it moves about an inch an hour. Um, and then there's an emitter receiver. It is called a nano drone, and uh, it is worth a ton of money. Now that said, this is clearly a custom job, a custom job because the uh, I'm trying to find the page, the original um, function for this is uh, here, I believe. Yeah. So they normally use these um, tiny drones to. Um, they, they they are used in pairs with a nano wire connecting both of them, and they fly through the air and just cut anything in their path. It's the type of thing that is released like through a, a uh, an air vent more often than not. And if you find yourself next to it, you will be cut into tiny, tiny slices like bologna. Um, this one clearly has been so the the um, the rotor on it was changed for this sort of motor, and then where you would hook the nano wire that was changed for a very small camera, um, which makes it heavier than normal which is probably why it wouldn't be good to move but because of that because of all the uh like manipulations that were done to it there are no signs of like a serial number or whatever on it the, the person basically took a uh, like filed it off if you will just by you know soldering and then removing you could however knowing you know, what you know of tech and cyberware and everything, there's not a lot of companies that sell these things. Like, with a good enough search on the data pool, you can probably find where it originated. Well, no, it's been modded. I don't need the originally originator anymore. I need to know who modded it, and there has to be a signature, their work. Something like this has to be, you know, particular skill set, right? So You're looking at a very good uh cyber tech yeah so do i recognize the work it's like asking a bomb tech if they recognize the pieces of a bomb mm -hmm. um which say... is not me endorsing bombing just no. general practice no. this group has never bombed any major corporations to the ground um have no. um Make a uh, make a um, local expert check. Ooh, cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna dump like four of my luck into this just cause mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. Seventeen. I rolled like crap. Um. You have an idea that this job wasn't made by a um, uh, by legitimate means. Like it's not a job that someone would have gone into, like a cyber shop or a clinic, and asked someone to craft this drone. We're talking more about um, probably 
a gang that would specialize in um, in technology, which with a 17, you can narrow it down to two. It's either the Maelstrom, who are, you know, cyber fanatics, or the Iron Sights, who um, were at the uh, beck and call of uh, Arasaka before the bomb. And they were, you know, the one gang that prided itself uh, for having, like, the latest cyber. In fact, the... Um, the scratchers, the weapon scratchers, came from... It, it is their invention. Uh, not the oh. scratchers, the rippers are their invention. Is the Maelstrom the same people that did the bomb that blew up at the ambulance? Um, yes. The cranial bomb? Yep. Okay. Yeah, uh, Trins will mention... So, the work is unique. Whoever did this modified the fuck out of this shit. Expensive, well done. Took something a little bit high end and made it very particular. Probably have another one somewhere. They originally would have come in pairs to cut somebody apart with, you know, a little razor wire bullshit. But, so they probably have another one somewhere that they didn't waste. Based on the work, the skill, the technology involved, my bets are either maelstroms or iron sights. Don't show which, but those are my bets. And she would say this as she begins uh, to then attempt to backtrack the signal. So is that my cue to turn off the jammer? She's about, she like asks you to turn the jammer off, yeah. Okay. You're gonna need to, um find a way to plug like to connect this thing to a, a computer system um, which right now um, none of you have the required tool what which is um, basically you think about a uh, it's like if you uh, would need a, a specialized USB cable that connects a to a nano drone. This is something that can be found, probably with the help of a fixer, um, but not Which something. Is when they get cookies. Um, <laughs> just across the hall. So, the um, you wouldn't be able to hack it Wi-Fi, or not hack it, but connect to it Wi-Fi. No, it doesn't have. Um, it basically receives a signal to like move, and it sends everything it records. Like it is always on, if you will. So there's, there is a Wi-Fi connection, though, but not to actually the... Okay. So I can't just... follow the signal. Not until you get a USB. Not the, until the you get... Cable. Yeah. Once you, okay. once you connect it somewhere, because it, like, if you... Ch there is no... Like, if you try to scan for Wi-Fi signals, if you will, it doesn't register on anything. Okay. So that answers that question. All right. Um, so it's like, well, I'm going to go ask Kat if she can find me a really fancy cables. So I'll okay, turn I'll the leave jammer the, back on. Yeah, I'll leave the jammer on and the amp here. Yeah, my amp, by the way, I'm claiming that shit, mine. And she like takes the glass and puts the glass over top of the amp. What like glass actually? She, where did she get the glass? Out of yeah, her gear. I don't. Like a little, like one of the little um, screw top glass oh, okay. jars that you Got would it. have had for uh, screws. Gotcha. Her gear. So it's like yeah. you're, you're not using one of my cups. No, one of her shit. She covers it with the glass, a little glass jar, and then she kind of goes skipping across the hall. All okay. Right. Um, Black Cat, it's we're gonna get back to you um, in a moment. It's gonna take a like you're not gonna get the, 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 the cable like right away. <laughs> you can have it for by tomorrow. That's for sure. Um, 
So what we'll do is... How much is it going to uh, cost me to get it delivered that quickly, though? Oh, uh, can you make a trading check? Sure. Your base DV is going to be a 14, but uh, we'll see by how much you beat it, and then uh, that might, you know, lower the price of it. The... Jesus. So free, right? Yeah, you get it for free. <laughs> it would have been 300 eddies normally, but someone owed you... And it's really persuasive. <laughs> yeah. This, this is why I prefer to trade in favors. <laughs> so uh, you'll get it tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning. Which is uh, where we're going to fast forward. And begin our day with uh, m &S, And then we'll go around the rest of the apartment. X, you wake up this morning... Uh, same routine, I figure. The ice bath and uh, the training. Yes. You wake up early enough for us rays of sunshine, I guess, and uh, prepare your, you know, what has become your routine every day. Uh, and you're lounging in your ice bath when your agent goes off. The voice on your agent says, A phone call incoming from Mr. Lucius Ryan. Ah, well, Menas will definitely pick this one up. Mr. X. Can I call you Mr. X? Mr. X was my dad's name. You could just call me X. X, then. <laughs> X. I got news for you. Um, we found some of your nasty friends. Really? Well, found a trace of your nasty friends. Uh, a piece that is going to be published uh, probably later today in the um, in the scream sheets. But I wanted you to know to have the scoop before anybody else. Those uh, nomads that you spoke about. The ones with the uh, Flaming Skull logo. Two of them were beaten up pretty badly at the Slammer last night. They thought they could start some shit over in the, uh, at the bar, and the uh, people in it didn't take too kindly to visitors. Well, they don't take too kindly to anyone, if you ask my advice, but they're currently, uh, currently lying in critical condition in a ramshackle clinic in South Night City. I suppose I can make a, a pay them a visit today. It, uh... I do not know how long they have. Honestly, I was surprised to learn that there was a clinic there, but a place where they don't tend to ask not a lot of questions. And I do believe that nothing that they have is sanitary. So, um... I'd be careful going there. But, Good thing I got my tetanus shots the other day. All right. And, um, um, if that, that's all I have. This. Yep, that's all I have for now. Uh, here, I'll send you the article. And uh, you get the article from the... Um, uh, it's a... Um, like, it's a... Gar it's a... It's not really an article article, it's more like a, a blog post on one of the garden spaces in Night City. Uh, so it's a, uh, a person who basically runs the, um, uh, like the Slammer's PR account, if you will. And they normally talk about like events or people that show up there or like whatever happened. 
uh, and it's mostly mostly violence related. Uh, the slammer being a, a not cool place to be. Um, and yeah, there is one video footage. It's about five seconds long of uh, a Raff and Shiv getting a... Um, he's in the process of drawing a sword. They seem to be right at the entrance of the bar. Like, the Raff and Shiv is outside. He's shouting at someone inside and drawing a, bl a long blade, probably a machete. And you just see this fist of steel come out from inside. Punch the guy so hard in the face that his feet leave the ground and he drops like a few feet away in the dust he's not moving and the video like shuts off almost immediately as the person behind the camera says oh shit and then apparently this will be picked up by one of the major like news network probably network 54 and then be broadcast um, normally it's not that big of a deal, but the fact that they're clearly not Night City natives sort of attracts attention to that. Why it's, like, newsworthy. Fair enough. Uh, X will, um, text Mr. White and, uh, send the article along and ask... Maybe we should uh, pay these guys a visit. Medical thing, and we can ask them a couple of questions. If they're still I, alive. I do have questions. I'd like answers. Let's do it. Do I happen to know that clinic? You're just as surprised as Ryan was. He texted you the address, and... It is clearly some sort of, like, illegal ripper dog operation uh, by the docks in South Night City. Okay. Like, you're, this is in the middle of gangland. It's not, not a place that someone operates legally. But then again, it's the combat zone. So, like, mm -hmm. who really operates legally in the combat zone anyway? Yeah. Like, um... So you don't know where they get their stuff. That's fair. Um, so it's basically, it's not Kava's new operation, is what I'm gathering. Oh, no, 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 no. Because he said he was going legit. Yeah. So with yeah. that said, uh, do you, do you, the two of you, do you share the news with others or do you just want to leave, like, the two of you alone and go to the... Oh, no, I mean, we can tell everybody. That's not an issue. Um, that we have a line on some, on, on a couple of them. Going a field trip into gangland. The, uh, yeah. the rest of the group is awoken this morning because remember, Imanez and Mr. White get up freaking early in the morning. Yeah. So the rest of you are awoken by, <laughs> by your agents, your Chirons, going off. Like, even with your eyes closed, you have this pop-up that appears. Rise and shine, <laughs> campers. Get your booties on, because it's cold outside. Is that code? That sounds like code. Am I supposed to be bringing more things? We're going on a field trip to Gangland. Oh. So I should bring the C4 then. Okay. No. We're not setting bombs. Okay, then I'll bring the demolitions kit. You may have to disarm some, yeah. Um. Do I know any of the gangs in that area? Um, this is Maelstrom territory. Ooh, fun. 
the kind of people that if they see you sporting chrome, they will kill you and pick you apart for all the chrome that you have. No, they will try. That just means I add three more gangers to the encounter. That'll make Reno happy. And Jinx. More headshots and faces to bash in. Reno, do you need... I think I've fixed the gun. Okay. We've got the 50 cal, we've got the turret, we've got the extra bullets. I think we're good. And I refilled the NOS system. Okay. Cars are ready to go. Um, before you leave... There are two more messages that will reach the group um, on your drive to the combat zone. One is a short video message from an unknown address sent to five of you. Not Black Cat. Black Cat is excluded from that. And the other one uh, is sent to Imines from Mr. Ryan's number. It is a text message. What do you want me to start with? The video or the text message? Video. All right. You notice a um, peculiar and familiar blonde face. That of Alt Cunningham. Who says... Hello, friends. I've been gone a while, and I will be a while before I come back to Night City. Um, I found this place up north. Well, to you it's up north. To me it's sort of adjacent, I guess. Uh, I'm setting up a haven for lost runners. Other people that were killed by Soul Killer or by whatever demons Bark Moss unleashed on the net. Um, there's a few AI here, and we've decided to try an experiment. I'm not going to be reachable for the foreseeable future, but if you absolutely need me, and I mean absolutely need me. Because the AI here will not tolerate me talking to meat sacks. Um, I have enclosed in this video, encrypted in the footage, coordinates for a dead drop. I will check it periodically. Don't expect anything immediate. But if you truly need my help, you can go to that dead drop and just leave a message. I hope you're all doing well, and uh, I hope you're not dead. If you are and your number has been reassigned to someone else, Please disregard everything and go fuck yourself. And the video ends. She's very sex positive, at least. <laughs> we should send them a present. If she got a new place, we should definitely send her a present. Like what? Like a fruit basket. She lives in a computer. Okay, so like a virtual fruit basket. <laughs> you send her a gif of a fruit basket. I don't know. And then there's the text message. Do you open it up, MS? Dear X, this is Lucius Ryan. 
Talia informed me that some of your ent entourage uh, were setting up a poker night or something of the sort. We both would be delighted to attend to one of said evenings. If you could provide a time and date and a location, and I will make sure to note it down in my agenda. This motherfucker really just invited himself to our party. <laughs> totally. You'll forward that on to uh, Jinx. Oh. Hey, cat. Oh, yeah? You still got a chance. With we what? gotta play some poker. All right. <laughs> Why are we playing poker? With, uh... The bodyguard. And then Lucius. Dude, person. But we'll just get him drunk and, like, put him on the side there. Lucius? Awesome. Yeah. Lucius who? The, the, the... What's his it's last the name? Luc Ryan. Lucius or Ryan. Ryan. What are you guys doing with Lucius Ryan? He values certain people's abilities. And she kind of, he kind likes of turns. Okay, yeah. <laughs> He's been making maneuvers politically all over the city. He's trying to get in with uh, trauma team. Squash the, or um, didn't squash, but help convince the twins to squash the um, flying hospital idea. Yeah, well, I think we've got a uh, pretty good contact in him. He's the one who sent me the information on this clinic. I'll be sure to thank him. Oh yeah, we gotta set up a poker game. Somewhere. Safe. Yeah, right. But yeah, we're totally playing poker with her. Yeah. <laughs> Why not the rooftop? Isn't that where we always play poker? Or you all play poker? I just watch. Yeah, except rooftop is easy for snipers right now. I mean, I don't. Right. I can use myself as bait while we're at it, but. Or I could take one of the unused apartments and turn it into an actual, like, club space, you know? <laughs> that will up our market and property values, like. What, 20%? And the insurance rates. Yeah, but then we got random people coming. Well, if it's just for us, nobody will like, well, yeah, him and the girl. And, but like, we don't need random people coming into the apartment. Bingo. Yeah, so you know, just a private club. No, I'm not saying like a public club. I meant like a club space for the apartment building. It's a game oh, room. for us. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, That's like different a, than a private club. No, no, not a, well, not a private club. I misspoke that. But I'm talking about, you know, like, when you get to those high-end, like, apartment buildings that have their own, like, gym involved, which is already on the list, by the way. That's on the list. I've, I'm working on it so that people can work out in the building and not get shot at. But also, so, like, one of the unused apartments and, like, take it into, like, a... So, so Kat, are you okay with waiting three months to get this up and running? Because it sounds like this is an elaborate plan that's going to need a budget. Months? It's not going to I don't know how else you can make a proper club and uh, unless you all already have the all we people have to on do speed is dial in the budget. We could just like throw a table in there and some chairs and some cards, right? Yeah. Or yeah, we'll tell Lucius, buy, you know, rent out the club again. Yeah. He has the money for it. No, see, I, I'm, I got. I'm, I'm fairly <laughs> certain that he's not going to really care. I mean, I got enough. Off the off. I think I got enough wood. We can get some good beadboard siding out of it, you know, make that like. And I know my brother has one of those lamps like they had in the seventies that, you know, things with the, that you hang over the bar. We can do this. It'll take me two days. Less if I get help. Okay. Oh my god. Um, b 
before we end tonight, Mr. White will receive another message. A text message, well, a video message, but the header says for your eyes only. It's not a video, sorry, it is a text message, yes. Okay. It reads four words? Yep, four words. Bart Moss is still alive. Who's the sender? The same address that Alt sent the video from. And that's where we're gonna end tonight. Because I need to prep for the poker game. Hey! Everyone having fun? Questions. A lot of twists. Questions. A lot of twists. So next week, if all goes according to plan, we visit a clinic, we play some poker. Maybe some other games. Who knows? Maybe we learn that Talia actually has emotions. Who knows? And maybe Lucius Ryan becomes best bro with Imanes. <laughs> Unlikely. Also, are you gonna invite Barry? He normally comes to Poker Night. No. no. No, I think we should, because I think that Mr. Ryan should really meet all of his constituents. I mean, he could distract him, so then exactly. Talia is, yeah, okay, that works. All I'm saying, yeah, because if you try and not invite Barry, and Barry finds out, he's showing up anyway. Who is Barry? Mr. Showalter, he, his ma lives in that You have apartment? never seen him yet. Honestly, it's there's an apartment It's an experience. Where, yeah. I'm learning new things every day. This is exciting. It's an adventure. You will regret these words next week. So... <laughs> Let's go around the table. Uh, shout out where we can find you this week. If you have any projects, anything going on, please, by all means, uh, let everyone know. We'll do the same order as we did the intros. So we're going to do Deirdre, Anna, and Nino, Chris, Adelaide, and Rin. The mic is yours. Oh, hey, y'all. You know me. I'm at Deirdre Donlin on Twitter or Praxagora as me a four years to see me around on Twitch. Thank you for this. I needed this. I missed all of you. This was so much fun. Thank you for this fun times that we get to have. And I can't wait to see what happens next week. Um, I'm already designing this club space. It'll be great in the most cheesiest way possible, but oh, it'll be perfect. Um, and uh as for me, you can find me around in places uh, on Sunday on my channel for some Romance of the Blue Rose where uh, somebody uh, decided to leave the psychic party line for a, leave the psychic group chat for a private DM, psychic DM and dropped a mega bomb. Uh, that's where we're gonna start, you know, this week. There's drama, there's romance possibly vampires um and we'll pick up there it's sunday on my channel then you can find me next also wednesdays on my channel for uh witcher roads home our golden age of witcher campaign um we've left kagan and are on the way to bell haven we'll see what happens there's a wedding people want to attend i don't know what will happen but we'll find out. And other than that, I will be back here on Friday for some more fun and more great shenanigans with all these wonderful people. Um, check my Twitter because I suppose where I'm going to be, all the fun things I get to do and all the fun, fabulous, wonderful people I get to hang out with. See you next time. Anna. Uh, I'm Hannah. You can find me here on Twitch as Hanimation or Hanimation Art on Twitter, Hanimation Studios on Instagram and Facebook. And I will be here every Friday at 8.30 for Cyberpunk. I can't wait to meet everybody in the apartment. Woohoo! And Nino. How's it going, everyone? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Anino Gaming. Uh, 
I posted some fiction I wrote a while back over on my page at anitogaming.com. Um, I don't know what's happening with Scion, so uh, I'll leave that aside. But, but Sunday, um, we should be returning to the other doc channel to our next episode of uh, Dark Matter Ghosts of Salt Mall, which will be 3 p.m. Eastern. Hey everyone, you know me. I'm Chris Geary. You can find me on Twitter at Chris Geary. You can find me here on Fridays playing uh, Mr. White, aka Dr. Frost. Um, on Mondays, every other Monday, not this upcoming Monday, but rotating off the following, uh, we have uh, the Falkenstein Affair over on Action Fiction, uh, run by um, yours truly and the lovely Adelaide right below me. Um, you uh, can find all of that wonderful drama there. Uh, and then um, if you start paying attention in the next, I'd say three weeks or so uh, to the at Omens Rising uh, Twitter account, you will start to see some bits and pieces posted and hopefully an announcement about a um, pre-alpha uh, stream playtesting stream where you'll get to see some behind the scenes um, work, reworking and working of the mechanics of the game. I went and followed immediately. Adelaide. Yep, that's me, Adelaide Gardner. You can find me everywhere at Oh Adelaide. Tomorrow we have um, Zenotic Drift, which is on ProDM Joey's channel and every other Sunday and Monday. We are playing next, this upcoming Sunday though, for Vampire the Masquerade, Drain the Rich Campaign, which is an all BIPOC game. It's super fun to go check it out. That's on action underscore fiction on Twitch. And then not next week, but the week after we will be back with Castle Falkenstein, which we all, we all really, really love that game. It's a good game. And uh, that's it. Hey, I'm Red. You find me here every Friday, and that's about it. Um, and I do have fix on my website, which I'll put in the chat. And uh, at Heaven's Night on Twitter, or Burns Through the Rain on Twitch. And I'm tired. I'm sorry. That's it. Done. And I am Simon at Wandering DM, and you can find me here on Mondays and Fridays at 8.30 p.m. for uh, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden and Cyberpunk Red, respectively. Tomorrow we're going to be over on Level Up Dice at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern for the uh, continuation of our Scion campaign. And then on Sunday, uh, like uh, Deirdre said, I'm over on her channel for some romantic fantasy with my wolf boy. Uh, on Chew uh, on Wednesdays, I'm over on Unmade Gaming for some more cyberpunk, and on Thursday, I'm producing the Sirenscape Cyberpunk Red show out on a limb, which you should definitely come by and watch. Uh, they're all bite-sized episodes, so they're really easy to consume. Um, and uh, that is it for me, I believe. Um, I will see you all next week. In the meantime, take care, everyone.